following is an unpaid preview for a game seeking funding on Kickstarter. The product seen here is a work in progress and is subject to change during the duration of the project. Hello and welcome to the Cardboard Stacker Game Designer Interviews. For those who don't know me, I'm Ferdinand and I'm head of the Cardboard Stacker YouTube channel where I have board game reviews, previews, and tutorial videos related to all things board gaming. Today we have the designer of an upcoming Kickstarter game called Lord of the Chords. And with me today is Jonathan. Thank you for coming to the show. Thanks for having me on, Ferdinand. Uh-huh. All right. So we're just... Get down to the basics and just introduce yourself, uh, where you're from, and uh, uh, what game is this? Okay, I'm Jonathan Ng, that's NG, from Singapore. And the game I'm designing is called, called Lord of the Chords. And we call it the geekiest, punniest music theory card game. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I, I see some, the, I think the uh, flyers and advertisements for this, so, you know. Uh, who, or was it like hide, like why you're hiding or something like that? Or can you handle this? Or <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, I, I I love that kind of stuff, and I always always post these things like on my Facebook and Twitter. So <laughs> yeah, I mean this is really cool because it it is a game that really merges one of my two uh, biggest worlds, which is board gaming and music. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So anyway, uh, there's. I mean, this is. There's really two sides of this. There's the gaming side, and there is the music side, and I think we can bring that together at the end. So let's start with the gaming side for all things. So, uh, tell me what what you got into gaming, when, where, how, and why do you became a game designer for this? Okay. I was born in 1994, so I played a lot of uh, Game Boy, Game Boy, and Game Boy Advance when I was a little kid, uh, and it was mostly Pokemon. <laughs> my, my childhood was mostly Pokemon, some Final Fantasy, um, and, and a few other GBA titles like Fire Emblem. Yeah, mm -hmm. So gaming was always around me. I remember uh, going to my uncle's house and they were playing Tekken 1 or Tekken 2 on the PS1, and that, was, that blew my mind. Yeah. So that's yeah. how I got into gaming. Okay. Yeah. Okay, so uh, more, how about more specifically, I mean, this is a, a card game too, so... Uh, what, any background on that or what kind of card games do you play? Uh, well, I'm from Singapore, so we play a lot of Mahjong. <laughs> yeah, well, and, uh, which, is typically a, which is typically a card game, which is just, just on tiles. But, you know, that's kind of blasphemous if I say that because you need those tiles for Mahjong. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, a, yeah. it's a set collection game, right? Essentially, yeah. that's what Mahjong is. And yeah. uh, I, every time I'm designing, I always try to draw from Mahjong because the way I see it, Mahjong is a game that got passed down by old people, like people who usually don't play games, without a rule book. So that's crazy, right? That the game got passed down for thousands of years without a rule book and by old people. So to me, there's something timeless about Mahjong. So I, I try to incorporate some of those uh, principles in, a, in my own games. Yeah. And uh, yeah. <laughs> besides that, um, I, I'm not a very hardcore board game uh, player actually but my two teammates are they, they play alien frontiers pandemic pandemic evolution everything they're playing yeah uh, <laughs> yeah. yeah so i'm doing this with two other guys uh, i'm jonathan the other, the other one is junyu and the other one is keith so two other guys okay. Yeah. okay would you say that you're the lead designer for lord of the chords or you're kind of like the code everyone's like a co-designer for it yeah all three of us design cards and game ideas for the game okay yeah. cool cool I mean, I I, really, I just want to really go back into like the your the Game Boy era because I also had I actually I'm born in 1989 so I actually had the original Game Boy and, and stuff and and yeah I love that uh, uh I mean really one of the best systems was Game Boy Advance yeah weird yeah yeah I mean. Castlevania and uh, what? Uh, let's say Fire Emblem. I mean, yeah. I I got into Fire Emblem before everyone got into Fire Emblem. That's like <laughs> that's so cool. So, yeah, I mean, it it was like it was a really one of the game changers for me because like oh this Fire Emblem. I actually I knew what who were Marth and Roy was from Smash Brothers because that's like you know because that's, they're from Fire Emblem. But I didn't know there were fun Fire Fire Emblem. I just oh. know they're just two weird guys. They're in Smash Brothers and like oh Fire Emblem. Oh, this looks like my kind of game. It's an RPG strategy. Uh, tactical and like oh i really like this game and i love the story and stuff but it's like really this is like uh the middle point of fire emblem yeah and i, I was because, i was still playing fire emblem uh like two months ago on on a computer uh, <laughs> yeah yeah I, yeah yeah, it, yeah 
Yeah. I, unfortunately, the, the we got like number seven or something like that. Like number six was probably the first one on Game Boy, which actually had Roy. Mm. Yeah, and then and that's never released here. Oh, okay. <laughs> and then, and then it's also a game changer for the for the whole series itself because uh, at, because it's after the Super Nintendo era. They actually cut off a lot of stuff because Game Boy Advance had some limitations in there and made the game very, very simple. Oh. Yeah. So there's a little. That's a little bit of you know a little Greek geek game trivia for you. <laughs> <laughs> but now it's all compl- complicated again. Yeah. <laughs> but, but it's actually easy to get into. Uh, I think the newer games are great. And then uh, three. I'm excited for three houses this year. Hmm. Yeah. So that's the newest one. All right. Let's see. Uh, going through the list of interview questions. Uh, so, uh, how, what is your gaming design process? How, how, or how did you develop Lord of the Chords? Oh, so uh, it's a long story, but it's a really fun story. Yeah. So I would say uh, it really began when I was a teen and I was learning music theory, uh, and I was doing it just for the exam. Uh, you had to take music theory to pass a uh, grade eight practical exam in the ABRSM system and I hated it when I was doing it it was so boring and I remember falling asleep in a one-to-one music theory lesson (laughs) so that was horrible Um, and then I managed to pass it Uh, in fact I was uh, one of the only two students at my school to fail to pass with distinction (laughs) the other one was my sister that was pretty funny (laughs) Uh. <laughs> anyway, uh, yeah so i i finished my grade 8 violin so that's that's what i'm trained in and then years later i picked up jazz jazz guitar and something interesting was my my teacher mr bay he was very punny and very geeky he was basically the game <laughs> he showed me <laughs> that music at least improvisation was a lot like a game of musical ping pong if you knew the rules that's music theory then you can play the game and that's improvisation So Ah. once once I saw that, I was like, oh, it all makes sense now. All these scales and arpeggios and key signatures, they're finally useful. So I shared this uh, epiphany with my friend Junyu, who's the designer now, um, because I I wanted someone to jam with. He plays the piano. (laughs) And, (laughs) And the same emotions went through him. It was like, I used to hate music theory too, but now I find it cool. So that's when it all began. We were like, can we can we turn this into a game? So we just started prototyping immediately onto onto paper and with a pencil, and we started playing the game. We just made uh, one card for every note, like A A sharp, B uh, C C sharp, and so forth. And then naturally, it just came to be a, a set collection game because um, in music, chords are are a natural thing, right? You just play intervals, and it sounds nice. So we thought, okay, let's make a game where you collect chords. But then it was like, oh, there is no key. So we made a key signature. So there is a key signature and you make chords in key. And then we want to mix it up. So we have things like you're under arrest to skip moves. <laughs> you from Uno. <laughs> yeah, and we have Chopin who, with a, like, li- who literally chop up chords, <laughs> set you back a few turns. And uh, at, at first we thought like nobody would ever play this. <laughs> Between the me, me and just me and Junior, we were like, no one's going to play this. Um, so we developed everything just over three months. And it was really fun. But Wow. Yeah. Yeah, this is... I mean, I, I saw... Uh, I think I s- saw you guys like, right on Facebook. I'm like, oh, I got to contact you guys so fast <laughs> for this kind of thing. <laughs> because that, you know, all, uh, any music game always attracts me to just know everything about it and see it there. But yeah, it's kind of cool that the, your design process of, you know, think something that it's in your mind and then finally it's actually out on paper and now it's realized this way. And it's going to be in Kickstarter like in a few <laughs> hours from this uh, little podcast we're doing. Yeah, so yeah, cool. Yeah, just two days from now. All right. So, so, so uh, let me, let me what? continue the story just a little bit more. Oh, yeah, go ahead. Go, go, go yeah. ahead. So the stuff I just said happened three years ago, right? Crazy, right? Happened three years ago. Um, we printed one prototype of the game at the time, and then we, we were like, "This is so cool! We have our own game." But then we never took it any further because of university. All of us went to college. We are all engineering ah. majors. So we paused for three years. But in those three years, I was carrying the game around with me everywhere and playing the game with everyone uh, that I knew. And they were like, "You know, this is." I thought this was a dumb idea, but then they said it's pretty fun. 
you gotta pursue it. So that's that's how, um, why this just August of last year, I got Junyu and Keith back into it, and then uh, we've put in the the remaining thirty percent of the game. Yeah. Ah, mm-hmm. that's really cool. <laughs> I mean, you said that you are not much into the the major ha- hobby gaming area, but what is your favorite game though? So my favorite tabletop game. Yeah. I think it would have to be Splendor. It's oh, just Splendor's... so elegant, you know, the game. Uh-huh. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, yeah, jam, collecting gems. I mean, it's very abstract, though, but it is it is something that everyone can just get into. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. How Well, since you, you have a good background in video games, how about your favorite video game? My favorite video game of all time? Yeah. Wow, that's a tough one. Uh... <laughs> It might be Crash Team Racing from PS1. <laughs> ah, yes. I remember playing that, too. My cousins had that. We would play that. Like, this is like Mario Kart, but yeah. it's so weird and wacky. <laughs> yeah. And it was really, really skill-based as well. There, was, there wasn't there was much of a, like a slingshot mechanic. So if you're good, you can be way ahead of everyone. Ah, <laughs> uh, yeah. And I, I believe they are bringing it back. Yeah. I can't wait for it. Yeah. So uh, uh, my... Oh, it's... it's uh, well, I let you know mine. Mine is Final Fantasy VI, definitely. Oh, I see. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yep. So, played a bunch of Final Fantasies. I think, really, the only one I haven't beaten is three. <laughs> oh, I don't think yeah, I've I played that one. Yeah. No, 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 three. There's a DS one I bought. I really wanted to play the the original one. Mm. So badly, but they don't have anything. Well, they're probably like fan translations everywhere. So. <laughs> But I haven't I haven't touched I have fifteen but I haven't touched it yet so yeah I, I can't say I have played anything and I count the online I spent off so that's <laughs> <laughs> it's really the only way they way they did that uh, I don't know okay <laughs> so uh, so you said you made Lord of the Chords and your uh, you played it with your your other co designers the Kickstarter is now. On the you know at the end of the line now is how how did you put, uh, approach your playtesting? Um, did you show other people? Did you have like scheduled meetings or put a flyer out of we're playtesting a game or do you do ask like your friends or just random people to play your game? Yeah, uh, at the beginning we just played with friends who uh, knew music, and then that was just trickling like one, two, three, a few people, and then uh, since last year I wanted to get back into it. Uh, we went to this thing called uh, Game Start Asia in Singapore. So it's a big uh, gaming convention with cosplayers and everything. And uh, we got ourselves a table and we brought um, as many sets as we could make. We handmade the boxes and we were just popping the cards out of the punch cards that day, that morning. And we went uh. there and we just uh, played with people who came by. And uh, so that day itself, I think we played with about 50 people. And uh, we sold 22 boxes just over a weekend. And uh, at the time, it was priced at $40. Wow. So that was amazing for us. We had no idea people wanted it. <laughs> yeah. So from there, uh, we played with about 50 people. And then at the convention, we met lots of other board game people because we were at the in- indie games uh, tables. And then they brought us into the world of uh, Singapore's board game community. Ah. Yeah, so we started going to the meetups every Sunday and playing with them. And uh, it just so happened that over the next few months, they, lo- they threw like a few big, big board game conventions. <laughs> so we went to those as well and played with hundreds of people. So besides In Singapore? Board- uh, in Singapore, yeah. Okay. Yeah, so besides the board gaming community, we've also played with the music community. So um, I'll... I'll- I, back in my old school, Max Music School <laughs> in Singapore, they teach lots of kids. And then I was I followed them on Facebook, and I saw they were holding this uh, strings conference, international thing. So, and so I, I just crashed the party basically, and I set up <laughs> I set up a booth, and then all the kids came by and they wanted to try try it out, and they played it. Yeah, so I've played it with, with like uh, at least a hundred kids now. Yeah. Wow. Awesome, awesome. I mean, uh, I guess it can go all the way down to, let's see. So you play with, like, how, how old are the kids? Like 10, 12, maybe? Yeah, so I've played with kids uh, who were starting at 5 years old, but because ah. the, the brother was there, the brother was 10. Yeah, so I was uh, from 5 years old all the way to um, 13 at, at that particular uh, string conference. 
Uh, so what I've found is uh, nine years old and above is the best age to play the game. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I, and I find that eight years old and below, they understand everything about the game, but they don't have the patience to take turn turns. So that's really funny. Like, oh, yeah. They, they know what they're supposed to do, but they can't do it. <laughs> yeah. But um, yep. this game, uh, you can, we have a different set of rules that you can play with younger, crit, younger kids. Actually, older kids is really fun as well. So basically, there's no turn taking. It's a speed game. You're just trying to form as many chords as you can uh, within a limited amount of time. So that's fun as well. <laughs> okay, cool. All right. And the last question for gaming is uh, what do, uh, do you do when you're not designing games? Yeah. So both me and my teammates were engineering majors. So we're at university studying engineering. But all of us have taken a gap year to focus on Lord of the Chords. Ah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But, cool. I, but like besides uh, work stuff, I play lots of music. I've got two cats. <laughs> uh, <laughs> I spend a lot of time with my girlfriend. That's really fun. <laughs> oh, okay. okay. <laughs> All right, let's let's move on to the music kind of side of things now. Uh, and you said you're a musician. You said you played violin. Is there any other instruments you played? Yeah, I played the violin uh, and I took it formally since I was eight years old. And I took lessons all the way until I was 16. So I played it formally for eight years. Um, and But what I really love and I fell in love with was guitar when I was 14. Oh, yes. Yeah, I self-learned it, and I really love it. Um, I still play it every day. It help, helps me relax. Um, so I play guitar and violin, and then when my dog died, I was really sad, so I got a ukulele to replace the dog. Oh. <laughs> but I named the, the ukulele after the, after the dog. So oh. then I picked what's your, do what's your, what are your dog, dog's name? Uh, my dog's name was Kiki, and the ukulele was Yula Kiki. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Very funny. Yeah. So... Um, but picking up a ukulele is really easy when you play the guitar. Yeah. And uh, recently, I, I've been playing the kalimba. Like, it's uh, the thumb piano. Oh, yes. I've seen that before. Yeah, those things are beautiful. And everyone oh. falls in love with them the first time they see it. They're, they're quite mesmerizing, really. Yeah, they really are. Even my grandma is learning, and I'm teaching her. <laughs> okay. <laughs> yeah. All right. Anyway, let's see. Well, so what's your favorite genre of music? Oh, this is really hard to say because I listen to all sorts. Or, 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 or favorite genres, sorry. Favorite genres of music. Yeah. I wrote genres. So. Yeah. I listen to all sorts like jazz, classical, pop music, mainstream music, party music, dubstep. Um, cause, because I use SoundCloud primarily. So I find all sorts of weird stuff on there. Oh, yeah. Yeah. I um, mean, just, the, uh, uh, just yesterday, because we're, we're traveling down from... Uh, uh, a comedy club like my sister Sean started playing like Elliot Carter <laughs> which is like really out there for, for classical music yeah. I was like oh I, like, I, I still I still love this stuff I mean uh, I really hate it as a kid I mean some of this 20th century music yeah. stuff yeah atonal stuff <laughs> yeah I do love I, I love it now I, I, I don't know why it just keeps my ears like on its toes <laughs> yeah uh, how about composers I mean you like games so <laughs> I guess you have, do you have some there? Yeah, I think Nobu Uematsu is definitely up, up there. Yeah, that, that is like number, number one as well. Yeah, I mean, basically, he is, he is like yeah. my, basically my teacher. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's really cool. I, well, 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 from my, well, just a little bit of my background is that, you know, I, I, I did take piano lessons for these two years where I was just a little kid, didn't want to do it anymore. And then finally, my brother found a, a soundtrack to Final Fantasy 4. Oh. And yeah, the the original soundtrack. And at the very end that had the piano mm. uh, arrangement for Theme of Love. Oh, Theme and of I, Love, yeah. And that's like what I had to play at that time. I found the music when the internet was like still dial up. <laughs> yeah, and I, I that thing took me 2 months to learn because I haven't played piano before that for like 4 or 5 years. Yeah. But when you yeah, find that magic song, that's when the learning happens, right? Yeah, that's all. I, I still, I still memorize. I still haven't memorized. That's that's how much I, I, I would play that thing all the time. I still play it now sometimes. <laughs> yeah, so that that really kick start, kick, kick started my love for music. Oh, I actually did kick start because I didn't love music back then. All right. Yeah. So uh, this this really kick started and finding this piece. Next piece was uh, Rydia from the same game, mm. and then going to uh, Tina's theme. <laughs> after that. 
<laughs> from Final Fantasy VI. Yeah, and that was a really hard piece to learn too. Well, I Steam of Love was like two months. Tina's Steam was two weeks. <laughs> oh, that's a big yeah, difference. And, <laughs> yeah, and, and you, if you haven't heard those two pieces, uh, listeners, uh, those are very drastic pieces to learn. <laughs> yeah. So that's really cool. Yeah. Uh, any? How about how about classical composers, either modern, living, or dead? <laughs> yeah, I was thinking about which one for uh, the, the the classical composers. Like Mozart's really funny guy, and uh, I went to his house in Vienna just last Ooh. year, and it was super cool. Like he's such a silly person. He wrote letters to his wife, and he was like, um, "I spent the afternoon drinking tea with these ladies, and they're so ugly compared to you." <laughs> he write these funny <laughs> or, or- letters. Yeah, and that he he would like throw like musical uh, like planes to his librettist, <laughs> like through the like uh, like to window to window. <laughs> I heard that too. Yeah. And he also had like three different coats, so like like very like dyed colors and stuff. <laughs> yeah, very very fashionable kind of thing. Yeah. I mean, really living the rock star back in in the the 18th century. <laughs> yeah, he really was. So I really like him, but. If I really have to choose one, I would say Beethoven. He wrote crazy music, and it was deaf and everything, bipolar. And you can hear it in the music. I like it. Uh, oh, for me, uh, it's Bach. Mm. Bach is for me. Yeah. So <laughs> Bach is very... what, I, what I like to play. I always play Prelude in D on the guitar. It gets me up in the morning. Uh, you know, I find, I find, I because I play a lot of keyboard for Bach, mm-hmm. uh, I find his music very easy to play. Mm. Just very easy. Easy. I I can do everything that he could he, that he writes. Wow. I cannot memorize his stuff. <laughs> <laughs> it's so intricate and so and like you know you got like oh no and like what's coming after here because it's like because especially fugues like you know now he did this or maybe he did it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so yeah, I love playing his stuff because it's for me it's hand sudoku mm-hmm. because you have to really figure out what he was thinking, how he was playing the stuff. Yeah. Uh, so what do you like? It's in just going. Uh... So what kind of um, when you're playing? Do you like playing it your yourself with solo, maybe small chamber, or even a large orchestra? What uh, or what? Uh, what do you like when you're playing? What what is most comfortable to you? I guess. Yeah. So I mostly play solo because there's no coordination, but uh, oftentimes with Junyu, if we we spend the whole day like working and we're tired, then we just go and jam on the blue scale. Or yeah. he'll just play CGA on F, and I'll, I'll improvise on C major, <laughs> and then we'll swap. <laughs> so that's really fun. Cool. Uh, I I am deathly afraid to play solo, when, especially for piano. Oh, interesting. I, yeah, I, I I play tuba as well, and I'm very comfortable if I have an accompanist. I don't know why, but if it's something, if it's, if it's just another body on stage, I'm fine. <laughs> so 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 maybe if someone conducts me when I'm doing a piano solo, maybe I would think I'll, I'll probably do well. <laughs> Yeah. But anyway, I, I think the last thing here for our musical questions is tell us a musical joke. Okay. <laughs> what do baroque dogs do? What? They bark. Of course, <laughs> they bark. Well, I do have one too. Here's mine. Okay. Uh, let me see. If I can find it really quick. Oh, how would you know when a bassoonist is leaving? Mm, I don't know. When he's taking his bus soon. <laughs> <laughs> so they always take the bus. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Anyway, so now let's go ahead and merge our two worlds together: gaming and music. Mm-hmm. Uh, I think you already told us a little bit about your Lord of the Chords and how it came to be, so we can skip those questions. Yeah. Oh, how did you came up with the name of the game? Oh, that, that's really fun. So we came up with a whole bunch of names, uh, and. Uh, in, in the process, we knew we wanted to use things we learned in literature, like alliteration or rhyming. Yeah. So the first name wa- was uh, Music Cards, but that's kind of plain. And then I thought of Cardenza, but then I thought uh, only like really musical people would under- understand that. Uh, later, I came, it came down to two great names. And the first one was Who Let the Chords Out? And the second <laughs> one was Lord of the Chords. <laughs> yeah. So, so, that, so those, are, those are pretty... Really, really good ones. So, yeah. you so, you want to keep that other one? <laughs> yeah. So actually, who let the chords out is the name of our extension pack. Ah, okay. <laughs> yeah. 
Okay, yeah. Anyway, because it's the title of the thing, my head always like, one chord to rule them all. <laughs> exactly. One chord to find them. <laughs> one chord to bring them all and in the darkness. <laughs> Bye. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Uh, so I know you said that it, it, the game itself does uh, go around a lot of musical theory ideas. So the, uh, does a player need to know music for this game no, yeah. no music theory all right so i'll talk about people who do know music the game's rules make a lot of sense like it's really intuitive if you're musically trained but if you don't know any music it's like it's it feels as though the, the rules are arbitrary yeah there are lots of things to learn but it's not 100 percent necessary in fact like uh the so we've got junior and keith keith has no musical background at oh. all yeah we, i got him on because he's a great designer but interesting enough, after playing a few rounds of Lord of the Chords and explaining the, the concept needed to play the game, he began to get it all. And the funny thing was he was understanding music theory while having fun. And that was mm. my mind. <laughs> yeah. The, 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 so this is like one of the greatest things. This could be like one of the greatest things next for gaming is finding really that bridge between the actual music theory and game mechanics Yeah. in there. So I, I'm pretty excited. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, people have done it before, but it's really, I mean, some people do like, I mean, this last thing was, uh, I looked up was progressions. Mm -hmm. <laughs> they did chord progressions and, yeah, four, five, one, and that four, one, five, one. yeah, yeah. Four, five, one, one, four, ward, four, five, five, seven, <laughs> six. <laughs> yeah. So that one, you, you, you probably would enjoy it if you had good prior music knowledge for that. So, I mean, you have this question, which is, why, why do I think music-themed games are not common in the game world? Yes. And, and yeah, I think this is a really important question because uh, there are actually a bunch of them out there, but they're either A, too educational and not enough like a game that can smell the educationalness from a, from a mile away. And it's not fun to play. <laughs> or B, it's, it's, it's very game-like. It's a complete game, but it's only musical and theme and not yes. actually musical. Yeah, I, I have a lot of I mean, I collect music theme games anyway. Um seeing how they can go through all these all these things. So Yeah. So what we we think we've managed to strike a fine balance between actual musicalness and good old tabletop gaming fun. Yeah. Oh so, great, yeah. Yeah. I, I think a lot of designers fear that creating a game that's too niche will kill their market potential. And uh to be honest, even we think we didn't think anyone wanted to play it when we created it. But after testing with people running some ads, the like the response was so positive, like people like thanking us for making the thing, and uh -huh. saying they need it, they want it, tagging all their friends. That made us realize that musicians they're really they've been waiting for a game like Lord of the Chords. Mm -hmm. I mean, I'm I'm waiting, <laughs> so waiting, and it's, it's like it's right here, yeah. right now. I mean, I'm mean, going back to like some of the theme. Uh, music games. I mean, if you got like something like uh, anything that's rock music related, mm. it's usually like rock manage rock band management. Right, right, right. And then the last one, the most popular music game right now in the in the hobby is Symphony Number no. Nine. Great yeah, game. That yeah. yeah, great game. Does deals with classical composers, but it deals more more of the economics and a little bit of the culture of the whole thing because you are basically the manager of like patrons and they try to put it a show <laughs> yeah and, and it's just like one of the funniest mechanics i think in the game is it's a little humorous because if you don't put enough money the rich don't want to see it it's like oh not enough <laughs> money i don't like it we're not going <laughs> and the other one is if you put too much money it's too extravagant and the peasants will revolt and like in labor, so they don't put the the the, the show on. So okay. I think it, uh, that was kind of humorous kind of thing. But it's kind of cool because uh, a lot of what we know from uh, music is classical, and that's what kind of kind of happens in in that kind of world too. Right. It's it's yeah, nice because, to see what goes on behind the scenes. <laughs> yeah, because uh, music was completely supported by the aristocrats and the rich and people who can afford that kind of thing. Yeah. And then we get into the like the 19th century when people, the middle class, finally got a chance to, to play more music, thanks to the you know industrial age as well, because now the and that's why you have all sorts of different people like because when you're studying 18th century music, it's like this German guy, this English guy, 
and then you finally get a lot more international people in the 19th century, like Fre- uh, like French and uh, Polish people. So, but now we're going back to Patreon.com, <laughs> the Patreon oh. system. Yeah. Well, the thing is, it's everyone's giving money now, so mm-hmm. not just that, that's that's just not just the very rich, mm-hmm. yeah, which can afford like ex- like their very or orchestra. Like, oh, did you see my own orchestra? We have 50 pieces. <laughs> 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 that kind of sort of thing, yeah. Or or having because they don't have radio back then. They have a sleeping chamber where where uh, the king would sleep, and then the the uh, chamber would have like a quartet playing music. So wow, that's epic. <laughs> they can go to sleep. Yeah. Wow. So and they had to walk quietly. They don't want to <laughs> disturb the king. <laughs> <laughs> okay, but I think let's see. Any more questions? You covered a lot already in there. Yeah, but yeah. Uh, looks like I'm out of questions. <laughs> <laughs> so this is this is I think this is a really great thing you're putting up. Mm-hmm. I I would say I I'm gonna back I'm gonna back this game. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah. So uh, I mean congratulations and uh, uh, this and I I love that how the story came to be for a game like Lord of the Chords. Yeah. And yeah. Um, we are gonna do one final redesign at the end of the campaign. So none of the cards are final. And everything's uh-huh. just gonna get an improvement, yeah. So that's what I want to say. And uh, before we end off, if we're gonna end off soon, I really want to read what I've written, which is called "Lore of the Chords." <laughs> We've written a oh, little bit of theme stuff into it, and uh, it'll be on on the the front of the uh, Kickstarter page. But I'm gonna read it out to you if that's okay. Go ahead. Okay, it's loading. Hold on. <laughs> okay, are you ready? Lore uh-huh. of the Chords. Here we go. The powers of the old maestros have diminished. Without their lord to keep the peace, the chords have fallen into dissonance. According to prophecy, four instruments will compete in a dynamic battle to complete the three faded chords. There will be major stealing, instruments will be placed under arrest, and chords <laughs> will get blocked. Chord blocked. Not even minors will be spared. But eventually, the measure will reach a resolution. One instrument will reign dominant and a new Lord of the Chords will be crowned and there will be harmony in the lands again. <laughs> so that's I I am like double face palming right now. <laughs> <laughs> I love that. Oh my gosh. Yeah, that that is great. Yeah, let's see how many you caught. How many of the puns you caught? <laughs> oh, I wasn't counting. <laughs> that's good. <laughs> I wasn't counting. No, no, it was like two in every sentence, uh, two for one. So <laughs> too immersive. Yeah. Okay. Wow. That's great. I love that. Love that so much. All right. All right. Thanks you for coming. Yeah. Thanks so much for yeah. having me on. All right. Yeah. Let's, let's go. I'm gonna go ahead and end this right now. So, hey guys. So thanks for listening in, and I like to thank Jonathan again for being here. For more interviews like these, but this is really like one of the first ones, uh, and for more board game uh, content, come visit www.thecarbertstacker.com and our YouTube channel, The Carbert Stacker. Thanks again, and remember to keep on stacking games. <laughs>